وقل ربي أعوذ بك من همزات الشياطين وأعوذ بك ربي أن يحضرون بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا وشفيعنا وحبيب قلوبنا المصطفى الأمجد والرسول المسدد أبي القاسم محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المنتجبين أما بعد فقد قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في محكم كتابه المبين وهو أصدق الصادقين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولا تزر وازرة وزر أخرى وإن تدعو مثقلة إلى حملها لا يحمل منه شيء ولو كان ذا قربا إنما تنذر الذين يخشون ربهم بالغيب وأقاموا الصلاة ومن تزكى فإنما يتزكى لنفسه وإلى الله المصير آمنا بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم والسلام عليكم جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته Dear brothers and sisters, uh, today we continue our topic of tazkiyatun nafs or purification of the self. In the previous episode, the first episode of the series, we discussed the general concept of purification of the self. And we mentioned that it is the goal of the believer, the seeker of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who fulfills his obligation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to seek purification of the self, to endeavor to purify the self to the highest extent that it can possibly reach in the span of life that has been given to it by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we mentioned previously that the topics that we will include in this series on tazkiyatun nafs or purification of the self, they will include discussions of certain qualities that are considered to be important qualities if one is to better themselves, if one is, some, is going to improve themselves in some manner. So we discuss in some detail uh, these topics in the next coming lectures. And these topics are going to include discussions on adl, or how to establish balance in your life on the quest of purification, how to maintain patience. And when we talk about patience, inshallah, we will discuss how a person is able to maintain balance. So if Adil is establishing balance in your life, then Sabr is a means or a tool by which you can maintain that balance in your life because there are many things that cause you to come out of balance or they take away from you that which will keep you settled and on a steady path. We will also talk about topics of Taqwa, seeking protection in Allah in, in this quest of purification. Tawbah or repentance and turning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then concepts of self-dignity, haya and generosity, sakha. So we mentioned previously that these qualities, these six qualities, and many other qualities that are found in the true believers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, these qualities are interconnected. And so you will find over the next few lectures that as we discuss each individual topic, other topics and other qualities will be intertwined and connected to them intimately because it is in the believer that all these qualities come to fruition and all of these qualities work hand in hand together to achieve the final goal of purification or tazkiyat to nafs for instance generosity and justice has been talked about greatly by Imam Ali alayhi salam and so as we continue with our discussion we will look specifically at how these topics interact with each other and how they influence each other as such, brothers and sisters, any discussion on the purification of the self, to nafs, must include the greatest gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala given to us, and that is the Holy Qur'an and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, who is the beacon of light and the best of examples for us in our behavior and in our journey. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes in the Holy Qur'an, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, لَقَدْ مَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِذْ بَعَثَ فِيهِمْ رَسُولًا مِنْ أَنفُسِهِمْ يَتْلُوْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ 
ويعلمهم الكتاب والحكمة وإن كانوا من قبل لفي ضلال مبين. Brothers and sisters, this ayah describes Allah's mercy upon us. He says, Allah says that it is a great gift, a great boon and a grace upon the humanity that he sent to them, he sent to us a prophet from amongst us, a messenger from amongst us. And he is the one who came to expound for us and to relate to us the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to relate to us the holy book, Allah's uh, holy Quran. And then it also says that the holy prophet came to purify us. He came to give us tazkiyah to nafs and to teach us the book and the wisdom. And humanity was in a clear loss and misguided before his arrival and before the message that he brought. And so Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, who came in a period of jahiliyyah or ignorance, came to remove the ills and the shortcomings and the ugliness of the ways of those people who were ignorant and who were drowning in the darkness of that ignorance. He came to remove them from that ignorance, from the evil of their actions, and bring them towards light and to fulfill their spiritual upliftment so that you can so that they could and we could in this future generation achieve spiritual perfection and to have purification of the self now to begin with the first topic brothers and sisters we begin by a discussion of adl or justice and so justice is obviously very important in our core belief after Tawheed, it is the most important thing we believe in the usul of our religion, the fundamentals, that there, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is completely just. He has never done any amount or will ever do any in amount of injustice. Everything is just. And so as we discuss this with respect to purification of the self, we talk about bringing balance. Adil is balance. Adil is giving everything its proper measure and giving everything its proper due. And so we talk about bringing balance as a means of adl on the path to purification of the self. And brothers and sisters, it is very important to recognize for all of us that when we break the rules of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when we transgress the boundaries of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have done injustice upon ourselves. And not only have we done injustice upon ourselves, but we have um, caused imbalance in our lives. The Holy Quran describes in a very well-known ayah, وَمَنْ يَتَعَدَّ حُدُودَ اللَّهِ فَقَدْ ظَلَمَ نَفْسَهِ Whoever breaks the rules or the boundaries of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they have done zulm or injustice upon themselves. And as such, when we do injustice upon ourselves, on our own nafs, we create imbalance in our life. And when imbalance is created, it takes us away from the steadiness and the, the constant walking on the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It removes us from the quest of purification of the self. So we ask ourselves the question, what is it that causes us to come into imbalance? Na'udhu billah. It is the human being that has been given the faculties of mind and ability and to fulfill desires. And so as we travel through life, we are bound by the choices that we make. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us in such a way that we make choices and as a consequence of those ch choices we either suffer or we benefit. And there are several things that are going to determine what our choices are going to be uh, in, in the course of our lives, in the course of our 80 years or 90 years of our lives if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills. One of those things that drives our choices, what choice we make, should I choose this or should I choose that, one of those things uh, is our emotions or are our, our emotions and so when we are in a period of anger or when something angers us we may make a choice based on that anger we may make a choice based on that emotion the same goes for if we have pain in our lives or if we are feeling sadness in our lives or na'udhu billah if we are feeling despair in our lives we make a choice based on that emotion that drives the choice that we are making another thing that can uh, decide or, or um, alter the way we make our choices are our whims, our desires, our base uh, uh, hunger that is inside of us. If I have a whim or I have a desire for something, I want it very badly, there is a thing I am craving, I am going to make a choice that is going to make it easy for me to acquire that thing that I want or that thing that is the object of my desire. I will make a choice based on that basic whim that is inside of me. 
Human beings can also make decisions based on conjecture or dhan. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Holy Quran says, وَمَا يَتَّبِعُوا أَكْثَرَهُمْ إِلَّا ظَنَّا إِنَّ الظَّنَّ لَا يُغْنِي مِنَ الْحَقِّ شَيْئًا Most of them are the ones who follow conjecture, dhan, making an assumption. And Allah says that assumption cannot override what is the truth. Assumption has no status in front of truth. It is the truth that always prevails. So brothers and sisters, we discuss uh, the aspect of our choices with respect to conjecture as being something that if I don't know what is truly the fact, if I don't have all the information, I sometimes make a choice based on assumption, on based on what I think is correct, not what I know with certainty is correct, but what is an assumption. And this can be a dangerous slippery slope, and that can take us out of balance, take us away from adil, and na'udhu billah, force us to do some form of dhulm or injustice upon ourselves or somebody else. Now the best ways to make a choice or to make a decision on whether I want to do this or that is based on reason, intellect, the God-given aql that, um, that has been gifted to every human being. Reason, when guided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, allows us to make the right choice. And lastly, we make our choices, hopefully, and with Allah's tawfiq, that we make these choices obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It must be through the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and with that goal in mind that we make our choices in our daily lives. And in doing so, we bring balance to our lives. We keep our lives in justice, in adil, in equity, and in fairness, not only to ourselves, but to other people as well. This applies to all aspects of our living. It applies to every part of our living. Every minute, every hour, every day of our life, this applies to, to keep balance so that our choices drive us in a direction of balance. It is described that after the battle of Jamal, Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam had gone to Basra to visit one of his very good friends, Rabi' ibn Ziyad al-Harithi. Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam, when he got to Basra, he came to the house of his companion, Rabi' ibn Ziyad, and he noticed that the house was very big and very opulent. He went and after greeting his companion Rabia, he says, O oh, Rabia, what use is this big house, this very palatial and opulent and uh, grandiose looking house when what you are seeking is in the Akhira? What good is this house in this world when you are actually seeking the Akhira? He says, if Allah has given you, Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam, he says, it is okay if Allah has given you this gift, He has given you this ni'mah, you have earned it through halal, lawful means. But He says, make it such that this big house, this palace that you have, all of this beauty and this gift of Allah, make it such that it is an earning for you for the akhirah. Make it such that it will be a benefit to you in the next world. Make it such, make this house such that it is hospitable to all of your guests and all of your relatives. Amir al-Mu'mineen says to Rabi' ibn Ziyad, be courteous to the poor people and be affectionate to them. And make sure that if Allah has given you this big house, has given you all of this ni'mah, this gift, and all of this possession, that you fulfill the rights of other people. That you make sure that you give to other people and impart to other people. You act with humility towards other people, particularly those who do not have what you have. In this way, Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam says to him, in this way, when the poor people look at your house, they see this big palace that you are living in, they will see that you are a man of truth, that despite this big house, you are not tyrannical, that despite all this possession, you are not arrogant, that they see this house and they equate truth, justice, humility, and appreciation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So as Amir al-Mu'mineen is speaking to Rabi' ibn Ziyad, Rabi' ibn Ziyad turns to Amir al-Mu'mineen, he says, Ya Mawlai, my brother Asim is the exact opposite of me. He has a wife and children, however, he has denounced the world. He has taken all of his possession and given it away. He has stopped working. He is living like a pauper, like a poor man who has no possession, and he is not providing for his wife and children. O oh, Amir al-Mu'mineen, can you please go and converse with him and counsel him? Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam goes to the house of the brother of Rabi' ibn Ziyad. 
he knocks on the door and he sees a house that has nothing inside of it. And his, the brother of Rabi' ibn Ziyad, Asim, he is wearing tattered and torn up clothes and he is just sitting there and he is trying to only engage in his worship. Amir al-Mu'mineen looks at him and he says, what have you done? Why are you living in this way when you have a wife and children to feed, when you have um, uh, duties to fulfill? If Allah has given you this gift, why have you gone and denounced the world and rejected the gifts that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to you? They say that the brother of Rabi' ibn Ziyad turns to Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam and he says, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, I have denounced the world because I crave only simplicity. I have denounced the world because I want only the akhirah, the next world. I have gotten rid of everything and stopped working and only engage in worship because I know the true reward is in the next world. So Amir al-Mu'mineen looks at him and he says, where did you learn to do this? The man turns and he says, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, I learned this from you. Amir al-Mu'mineen smiles at him and in response he says, don't you know that this way of living, of denouncing the world is the way of the Imams, the way of the leaders. Because when the leaders act in this manner, the poorest people in the community, the people of society who are most marginalized, they can look to the leader and they can feel at least that they are connected to them. If a poor person sees a leader who is rich and living in a palace, he will have no connection to him. He will feel alienated from him. And so there will be a big gap between the leader and the poorest people of the community. He says to Asim that, oh Asim, do not give up if Allah has given to you. Live in moderation, live in balance. Brothers and sisters, Amir al-Mu'mineen demonstrates that it should not be one in which you will live with riches and wealth. It is okay if Allah has given it to you, but it should not be one extreme or the other extreme. It should not be absolute wealth and richness and possession, or nor should it be absolute devoid of all of things. It should not be the complete denouncement of the world. It should be a middle path, and that is what adil and balance is in life. And brothers and sisters, to be able to understand this balance, to be able to understand adil, we must understand two things very importantly above Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the religion that Allah has created for us. Our duty to Allah is first and foremost. After that, we must recognize that we have our own nature to which we must answer for, uh, for fulfillment of its haqq. And then there are things that surround us, the people and the nature that Allah has created around us. We must fulfill their rights and we must do for them. To be able to understand how you do so in, in a balanced and in a just manner with justice, we must understand the individual rights of those people. We must know that in doing for others, we cannot completely forsake ourselves because then we do injustice to ourselves. And if on the opposite, we do too much for ourselves and we forsake other people, we become selfish and we do injustice to others. There must be balance. There, if you do too much for yourself, you become a selfish, tyrannical human being. If you do too little for yourself and you do not value your own nafs, then you have humiliated yourself. You have lost your own dignity. Thus, there must be complete and absolute balance in life. Tazkiyah to nafs, purification of the self, is the quest along this path to find balance, to find the middle ground, not too much in one direction, nor too much in the other direction. And brothers and sisters, it is very important that we must strive for this because to receive the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the body must be pure. The soul must be yearning for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at every moment. The light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will come to the body only if the body is pure, only if the body is seeking purity, is on the quest towards purity. And so to do so, we must understand balance and understand ourselves. Sheikh al-Naraqi um, has described in a very excellent book called Jami' al-Sadat uh, the many faculties and reasoning powers that have been given to humanity. And in this um, discussion, we learn the true nature of human beings, the strengths and the pitfalls, and the benefits of being in balance, being in the middle ground, being in the ground that is not one extreme or the other extreme. One of the faculties that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us is the faculty of anger. And in this, I do not mean anger that you are enraged or you are beating somebody up. I mean anger in that it allows you to defend yourself. It is the faculty that allows you to protect yourself. 
If you do not have enough of this faculty, or if it is deficient in you, you become coward-like. You become a coward, and you have no courage. However, if you have too much anger in you, too much of this faculty or this, uh, this uh, power that has been given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you may become foolhardy. If you see somebody in a battlefield who has too much anger in them, they may charge into a situation or go into a situation without thinking, and it could be detrimental and dangerous to them. Hence, you do not want to have too much, you do not want to have too little, you want to be in the middle. In the middle of this power of anger, you have a situation in which you have true courage. You have true balance. Not one, not too much on the other. But in the middle where you can have a proper balance. Brothers and sisters, when this goes out of control, you can have a condition of rage. There are many human beings who suffer from uncontrollable anger, uncontrollable rage, in which their emotions go out of control and they make decisions based on that rage and that anger that then become detrimental to them. What, you, what a human being requires is to come back to balance, come back to adil when those periods of rage are there. Bring forbearance and patience into, into the picture. And so we relate a nice story from Imam al-Sajjad alayhi salam. It is described that one day he was sitting in the mosque with his companions when a man came to him and started to use very foul language towards him. He started to curse him and call him names. Imam al-Sajjad alayhi salam remained silence, silent and he did not say anything, he did not retort back to that person. The companions were watching when the man finished cursing the Imam, when he finished using the bad language and denigrating the Imam, he left. The companions turned to the Imam and they said, Ya ibn Rasulillah, O grandson of the Rasul, allow us at least to follow this man and at least give him in kind or at least we can um, teach him a lesson, maybe we would beat him or do something to him. Imam says, no, you do not need to do this. Instead, follow me, I will go to his house and follow me to his house and see how I respond to him. They say in the history that when Imam Zain al-Abideen, Sayyid al-Sajjad alayhi salam, was walking to the house of this man who had just finished cursing him and calling him names, the Imam was reciting an ayah. He was reciting the ayah that says, وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا فَعَلُوا فَاحِشَةً أَوْ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ ذَكَرُوا اللَّهَ فَاسْتَغْفَرُوا لِذُنُوبِهِمْ وَمَنْ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَلَمْ يُصِرُّ عَلَى مَا فَعَلُوا وَهُمْ يَعْلَمُونَ He was reciting this ayah from the Holy Quran saying that those people who when they create or do an ill action, those people who do something wrong, or they do dhulm, injustice upon themselves. Again, remember, coming out of balance. He recites the ayah that those people who do bad or do wrong, and they do dhulm and injustice upon themselves, they immediately remember Allah. Dhakarullah, fastaghfaru li dhunubihim. They ask forgiveness of Allah for their sins. And there is nobody who forgives the sins other than Allah. And then it says, وَلَمْ يُصِرُّ عَلَى مَا فَعَلُوا وَهُمْ يَعْلَمُونَ They do not go back to committing that same wrong again when they know full well that it is wrong. They do not persist in it. Brothers and sisters, Imam al-Sajjad is pure, he is masoom, but he is teaching us awareness, keeping yourself in balance always. As he walks to the house of this man who had just cursed him and used bad language towards him, he comes to the door, knocks on the door of this man's house, and he announces himself, he says, I am Ali ibn al Hussein. please open the door for me. They say that the man hears the voice of al-Imam al-Sajjad and becomes fearful. He fears that the Imam has come to his doorstep now to exact some revenge for the bad acts that he had just done to him in the mosque. He opens the door, cowering and fearful. Al-Imam al-Sajjad turns to him and he says, My brother, you just came to the mosque and you said all these things to me. You said these things about me. If what you are saying is justified about me, if what you said about me is true, I ask Allah's forgiveness. But if what you have said about me is not true, if it is not befitting of me or justified to be said to me, then I ask Allah's forgiveness for you. Brothers and sisters, imagine the great control that Imam al-Sajjad demonstrates. He could have flown out of control and been in a rage when the man accosted him in the mosque. He could have asked his companions to beat up the man. Or he could have remained completely silent and not said anything. 
He could have ignored it and walked away. But he chose to do Amr bil Ma'roof. He chose to do Amr bil Ma'roof and teach the middle ground, the balanced ground. Brothers and sisters, this is the same way we must be. We must not be over-reactionary, nor must we be under-reactionary. We must choose the path of justice, adal and balance, and put everything in its proper place. Back to the faculties and the powers given to us by Allah. Allah describes that along with the faculty that allows you to defend yourself, the power of anger that is given to you, Allah has given you the faculty of desire. This faculty allows you to pursue and achieve and get those things that are lawfully necessary for you, that you can achieve lawfully and take based on your nature. If you have too much of this desire inside of you, too much faculty of desire, you become a lustful person, just chasing after your whims. If you do not have enough of this, you become a lethargic or unresponsive person. But when you have just the right amount, the balanced amount of this quality, you become one who has chastity inside of them. Control with the right amount of measure. Allah says that He has given us the mind, and so it is the mind that controls these faculties. And in the same way, the power of reasoning has extremes. If the mind is going to control these faculties, it has extremes that it can go. Too much use of your mind to do trickery and to become too smart results in slyness. You become somewhat of a makkar human being. If you do not have enough reasoning power, nor do you try to think and control your actions with reasoning, you could end up having stupidity inside of you or foolishness and become an imbecile. The right amount of reasoning, the balanced reasoning, the adl of reasoning, is that you have wisdom, you have hikmah inside of you. Brothers and sisters, that means that at the right time and in the right situation, you choose the right course of action and we come back again to choice. You choose the decision or you make the decision that is suited for that moment. You do the thing that is absolutely balanced and adil for that moment. Brothers and sisters, it is described in a very nice story that once Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, just like his great-grandson, was in the mosque with some companions and a, a Bedouin from the desert Arab came and he came into the mosque and he began to speak very roughly to Rasulullah. He was very crude and very coarse in his language to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. He demanded some things from him, he asked him, and when Rasul could not answer him, he had nothing to give to him, the man cursed him and turned around and walked away. The companions got up in anger and they said, Ya Rasulullah, let us teach him a lesson. He has been rude to you, he has cursed you, he has spoken to you in this rough manner, in this coarse manner. Allow us to teach him a lesson. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam went out, caught up with the man very gently while the companions are watching. He took the com this Bedouin Arab to his house, sat him down inside the house and treated him like a guest, talked to him kindly. And after treating him kindly, this man came, embraced Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, and some say that he even became a Muslim. When all of this was finished, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam went to the companions and he says, don't you know that my state or my position with respect to this man who had come to the mosque, this Bedouin Arab who had come to the mosque, is like the owner of the camels. You are such that when the camel runs away from the owner, you would chase the camel, make noises at the camels, so the camel would run further. I am the owner of the camel, I know how to bring it back. I know how to speak to it sweetly kindly and gently to bring it back to me and have it be close to me and be loyal to me. Brothers and sisters, this is how Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam in his wisdom is teaching us the purification of the self, is teaching us how to act in balance, how to behave in such a way that we can choose the right path in our choices. It is this facet of our life that often causes us to get into trouble. We act and we make choices based on our whims, our emotions, our conjecture, and that choice is sometimes not correct. When that choice is not correct, it takes us out of balance. It causes us to do dhulm, either against somebody else or against ourselves. And so we must ensure that at every moment before we make the choice, we ask ourselves, what is the choice that will lead me to adl, to justice? 
What is the choice that will allow me to fulfill the rights of people? As we do this, as we continue to refine our choices, think about our choices and control our choice making with reasoning and powers of the mind, we will make sure and we will start to purify ourselves because we will remove the disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from ourselves. We will remove the injustice that we are doing not only upon others, but upon ourselves. And we will develop a system by which in the future years, as we get older, choices will be made based on control, based on knowledge and hikmah and the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, insha'Allah. Brothers and sisters, this was the legacy of the Ahlul Bayt, salamu Allahi alayhim ajma'in. Their decisions, their choices were always choices based on haq, based on justice. They never made choices based on personal whim. They never made choices based on their own whims and their desires and the things that would have benefited them. They never made choices that humiliated them, that decreased their image in front of the people in front of the people and the community members. Instead, they made the choices that put everything in its rightful place. That is the question we have to ask ourselves. Do the decisions in our lives put everything in the rightful place or do they not? And with this, I wish you well. And until the next time, Assalamu alaikum jami'an wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.